No update on Royce Lewis yet, but there's still a lot to be excited about as the Twins prepare for game number two. It's Joe Ryan. It's Seth Lugo. We've got a preview of that and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked On Twins in the Locked On Twins Command Center. Yes, we are back home and back in more comfortable digs than a breakfast area, breakfast nook in a Fargo hotel. It's much, much better this way. But I'm your host, Brandon Warren. You can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And also back, although he, he never really left, Mr. Dave Brown at Answer Dave Brown on the tweets. What's up? Hey, Brandon. I I did leave my uh, my nice key light at the ballpark just in case I thought maybe we would do the show or I'd do my portion of it from Kauffman Stadium on opening day. We didn't end up doing that. So I brought my, my nice light and I left it in the press box and I just hope it's there tomorrow when I go back. So I'm looking a little darker tonight. That's why. You should, your alter ego for this show should be the cough man. (laughs) (laughs) It just came to me here in the middle of uh, thoughts. But anyway, I I had a coughing fit during uh, a pregame interview, not pregame, but it was the workout day. And it was Pablo Lopez was talking. And I was just, I think I was choking, not really, but I had a a tic tac. And I I had to excuse myself. And the, the twins, uh, traveling secretary thought I was going to die and it might've, you know, he might've been for that actually, but I I hate to disappoint him. How much, uh, what's your football level of knowledge, like your level of football knowledge. If I were to say, um, Oh, the Titans, uh, Mike Vrabel. Do you remember what Mike Vrabel looks like? Yeah. Kind of no neck. Uh, yeah. Tell me that, 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 uh, that, that Mr. Herman there couldn't be his like, I see it. He does. Lost, lost yeah. brother. You so know just I mean? you people out there, just imagine Mike Vrabel kind of being amused at me hacking up a lung in front of uh, Pablo Lopez and the and the media. Yeah, yeah. So um, that is uh, that's Mr. Herman for you. But that's who you were you were talking about. Anyway, hey, uh, thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube and as part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're your team every day, and we are so happy to, again, be back in the command center, watching my Timberwolves, keeping an eye on my Cougs. Uh, but we have a lot of fun twin stuff to get to. They didn't even play today. Um, but with that said, lots to cover in terms of what did and didn't come out news-wise. What uh, Maybe unrelated, maybe not, but what? how do you feel about the built-in day off because I get it. I get the logistics of it, but do you remember that conversation we had about what it's called when a reliever gets up and doesn't go into a game, (laughs) a dry hump. Yeah. That's kind of what the day off after the first game and maybe even more so if you win or if you're at home or both, I feel like that's what that off day built in really comes down to is it's a, this is a like cousin of dry hump. If we're putting yep. it in like monster movie terms from the films, yeah. yeah, it is a little bit. Uh, w- when the weather turns out to be nice, it seems like a big waste. Uh, I understand. I hate, you know, I hate sometimes being sounding devil's advocatey, but I understand what teams are doing. They're protecting themselves and their season reservation holders uh, from having a, a, a rained out, a snowed out opening day, so they have another day. After that, just to make sure, just in case, because uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if um, this, you know, the opening day is a little different. You know, it's just a little right. more ceremonial. And I think people buy spend a little extra money on it. And so they just want to make sure they can have an opening day. I understand. It. Here's what I would understand more. This is what they should do instead. Every team should have a retractable roof. I think Major League Baseball should invest in that. 
maybe not even leave it up to the individual teams, but every team should have like at least like an umbrella, a canopy. I know they do this in Europe. A tarp. Uh, but with support, like you can't play under the tarp. You'd crush yourself and you don't want to crush the players. I see no issue here. Um, so something to make it more likely that in a, in a rainstorm that you could play. But yeah, like a tarp for the stadium. Yeah. They have tarps for the field. Have a tarp for the stadium. Figure crazy. it out. Put some <laughs> kind of technology to work and, and, and make it happen. And then you don't need this dry hump day two. Look at you being devil's advocate. I, I actually have a scoop. Uh, I know where Dave gets his water from a well, actually. Um, I'm sorry. That was so bad. <laughs> you can't even help but just kind of like. And uh, I'm not going to help. That's fine. I'm a part. I, I, maybe there's a one of those memes going around. And it's like maybe you're the problem, Warren. And if you ever get a hold of that, you will probably use it quite a bit because right. yes, I am the problem. But yeah, uh, no news, which is usually good news, but I don't think it is in this case on Royce Lewis. And I don't know. There's been people speculating. Oh, not hearing anything. That means it's bad. That means it's good. That means it's all misunderstood. I don't know what it means exactly. But I get the sense that they're really just waiting until the last second to know for sure. And so whoever may be the replacement on the roster, and I think it's probably going to come down to Austin Martin and um, uh, Mr. Mr. Junior Severino. Um, but, you know, whichever of those two is probably already in KC. Uh, but I don't think they're waiting for any reason other than just to be as close to the game game time as possible and you know do, it's not do you hurt mean them. this do you think they are being uh is this a gamesmanship no no no, no. i mean i mean as though like why won't they just come out and say what he's dealing with and what grade it is and it's like i mean they probably have a pretty good idea but they're not certain quite yet you know they, they don't have to make an actual decision maybe he comes in tomorrow feeling better and so they're like okay you know well, maybe not the part know. about okay so we get, we we're talking dry humps um, the, the day off after opening day, it did give them some time. And when you are dealing with an injury that is likely to have someone go on the injured list, um, and I think that's what's going to happen with Royce. I have some I idle speculation about it, but that, well, maybe they're not like you were alluding to. Maybe they don't announce it because maybe he wanted to get out to the ballpark today or Saturday morning and test it. Yep. To see, well, that could be it too. I mean, that, and that's not sinister or anything like that. But with quads and with Royce's history, it would seem for me to, to be a practical situation, a pragmatic situation for them to replace him. Like almost no matter what the the, the, the grade of the strain turns out to be, some time on the injured list would be prudent. Um, so getting back to this day off thing, uh, hopefully, if there is a replacement, he's like already on the way from St. Paul or where is St. Paul? They open at home, did they? Um, I believe that they will be, yeah, because it uh, it got pushed back. Surprise! Snow. There was three straight days of snow this last week. We were actually in Fargo, and there was less snow in Fargo, North Dakota, than in the Twin Cities. Is there any of the Teflon roof left over from the Metrodome that they could put on top of Target Field? No, because they sold all of it. I, I've mentioned this before, but somewhere in this office that I'm recording from, I have a couple different pieces of it. They they sold it as part of like the Metrodome going away. Actually, I think this was actually more the um, maybe the collapsed of it in uh, yeah. 09. But either way, I have a couple pieces of it, and I don't think they kept it. They didn't retain it. They don't have any more of those blue seats. Can you so, cook with that Teflon? Can you make a Teflon I, pot out of it? I don't think so. Uh I'm not making any pot out of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, we've strayed from our point. But um, so hopefully if if Royce isn't OK to play, the twins don't have to play a person short. Right. Um, I, and I, I, I'm not a huge fan of their in-house options right now. We talked about off the air. We talked about Miranda not having a healthy shoulder and not playing any third base in spring training. So he's not an option. Austin Martin would come in and 
he plays he plays some second, doesn't he? I don't know if he did in the second season. outfield. Like he, I but don't not know third, right? I, I don't know if they would uh, try to put him there. I, I think that no. if they had, he didn't play a game there in the spring. So I mean, like that, that's not on the table. If he comes up, it's to be. I, I don't even know. Like if he comes up to play s- second, they don't need that because they've got Julian. They don't need the outfield help. Uh, I don't, don't know. Don't I think, do anything with second and Julian le- yet. We've got a transition there because right. it all it all kind of bakes in. I think they, I think Severino is the play here. You think uh, you hear Severino is the play? I don't have any inside info. I don't think anybody does. Um, I think some people s- are claiming to, and, and maybe maybe they do, maybe they don't. But to me, the play here would be Severino. Um, I still the, think going back to some of the things about the starting lineup that I'm not terribly comfortable with from opening day against a left-handed pitcher that the twins still need another right-handed, another guy to face left-handed pitching, whether he's right-handed or left-handed or both-handed like Eduardo Escobar. Ooh, he went there. Who could play third base and other positions and would bring, uh, you know, rainbows and sunshine to the clubhouse, you know, perhaps literally. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if Royce's injury is that big a deal that you would need to bring in a a guy with the gravitas and the salary toss of Escobar, but um, I still say long-term he could help the team over 162, regardless of, of Royce's issues. So, um, but we'll see. Okay. Let's take a quick second and, Talk about our friends at FanDuel. When we come back, we'll be riding it out for the duration, talking about not only more of game one, but also a, a surprise on the St. Paul Saints roster that came across my desk today. And a few other things from Dave at the Park, which sounds like a David Letterman feature from about 15, 20 years ago. But it's even better than that. But I'm glad first, I'm so up to date. Woo! But first, FanDuel. Your bracket may well be busted. I mean, we're almost to the Elite Eight, so there's a pretty good chance your bracket is shot. If you're like me, you're hanging on to the fact that maybe maybe Houston can beat Duke. I only have one of my final four out, so I'm feeling pretty good. But with that said, if your bracket's busted already, FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney no matter what. You can say goodbye to that busted bracket. So if you're betting on a big upset, we had one. NC State, an 11, beating Marquette, a 2. If that's yours, go for it. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's $200 on that you can use on point spreads, money lines, or who you think is going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And it's coming up quick, so you better... Get over there fast. Again, fanduel.com slash locked on. It's the place to be. I believe, Dave, that uh, Eduardo Escobar is deathly afraid of cats, too, if I'm not mistaken. That's a shame. Yeah, uh, He's definitely not afraid of Nicolas Cage. Because my favorite, of- my favorite all-time stories is, is him seeing Nicolas Cage and I, the, those two interacting. I think that's a... Mike Berardino favorite too, a uh, friend of the show, Mike, who uh, did tremendous work here in Minnesota. And honestly, I, I'm not even sure what he's doing anymore, but great, great twins reporter of years. It's gone. not Notre Dame related. I think he might still be doing that, but I, I'm not sure. He was with Indy, Indy star for a while and love Mike. Um, Triple A St. Paul announced their roster today. And I want to read it off just because not because I'm, time but because there was an interesting name that came across did you see me mention this today on uh, on the tweets um maybe twitter just sort of goes in one ear and out the other but go ahead oh, and so maybe broken. i'll remember it's so broken so for pitchers actually you know what for outfielders they only have two listed yoiner fajardo and deshaun kiersey jr infielders they've got michael hellman will holland austin martin jose miranda anthony prado and Junior Severino catchers. There's four: um, Jair Camargo, Alex Isola, Chris Williams, and Patrick Winkle. Uh, any one of those four could help the Twins at some point this season. And then there were pitchers. 
and I'm going to leave out the one that came across as a surprise because th there's a little quirk with it that's actually kind of funny. All right. Jordan Balazovic, Scott Blewett, Caleb Bushley, Matt Bowman, Michael Boyle, Jeff Brigham, Randy Dobnak, David Festa, Joe Gunkel, again, probably my favorite name in the organization, Hobie Harris, Brent Hedrick, Ronnie Enriquez, Ryan Jensen, and Simeon Woods Richardson. Now, I was looking, and number 38, a name I didn't mention, yeah. Diego Castillo. So, Mariners, good, Diego Castillo? Pretty good reliever with the Rays, and then things kind of went sideways with the Mariners. He was in camp, I want to say, with the Rangers, and then that, that kind of got fuzzy. I was looking at kind of like um, – you know, what, what does Wikipedia say? Because even sometimes Wikipedia will have a move on the wiki stub that will say, oh, a player's on this team, and we haven't heard it yet. And it said he was – I think it said he was with the Rangers still. So I was like, well, better check again. And so I, I look at the the name on the, the roster release, and I compare birth dates because that's usually the way I will make sure I'm correct. I'll, I'll compare birth dates, right? So the birth date – is two uh is nineteen ninety seven. It was that's uh, not him. That's not the, the Diego the Diego we're thinking of. So I'm like, wait a second. So I go on to baseball reference, I pull up Diego Castillo, and I type in Diego Castillo. There's there's two different ones. So I click the other one, and it's the shortstop who had a cup of coffee with I think the Orioles and the Diamondbacks. And so the age and state or country of uh, you know where he was born are of the other Diego Castillo but they also <laughs> they list him as uh six foot three 265 the other Diego Castillo a utility infielder is definitely not any of those things and again he was in the, the pitcher spot in the press release so I was just like what the heck is going on here they've got two separate and uh uh, an old Twitter friend who I think actually rebooted their Twitter under a new name because Elon suspended them said that they probably got just a bad data send where it crossed up two different player IDs or something. Mm. All of which is to say it, it appears as though the St. Saint Paul Saints have added Diego Castillo, who has some pretty great, I think, pitching ninja like gifts out there with the movement of, uh, I think it might be a slider or something like that. But again, this is again another kind of guy. We've been talking about all off season how this bullpen has lined up to be good and deep. Going out and getting a guy like this adds to the fuel to that fire. Well, it's been a couple of years since he's been effective. And can we get sued for things we say on here? No, nobody actually uh, listens to this. Well, you know, the Rays kind of have a reputation for. Um, using up their relief pitchers in a, in a let's just shoot all our bullets kind of way. And I think that's sort of what happened to him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's go a thousand percent Diego, whichever one you are. And, uh, and oh, Diego go, let's not exactly swiper. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, the heck with the future. And that might be, I, Maybe he's had time to recover, but um, hopefully he has. I, yeah. a, a player I always liked. He had a he was a big dude and he had a big personality too. Mm -hmm. So and it and big stuff. So uh, that would be great if he could help out. Uh, if not, you know whatever. But yeah, the Twins have been very uh, ahead of the curve in uh, in getting bullpen depth and cultivating it. And that that could be one more name that we see possibly with the big team at some point. Now, I didn't mention the injured list. It's a pretty strong injured list, too, which is obviously not a good thing. So Hovani, or Giovanni Moran had Tommy John surgery, will not pitch this season. But Matt Cantorino, right rotator cuff strain. Brooks Lee, low back pain. Austin Schulfer, forearm strain. And then one that I hadn't heard yet, uh, Trevor Larnick has turf toe. So it's a, it's a curious injury, but it, you know, it happens, it happens to the best of us. Um, yeah. You know, Larnick might all getting back to the, uh, the Royce situation. If you wanted to bring, it wouldn't be ideal for defensive coverage, uh, but you could put Castro on the infield and put Larnick in left field where he healthy. That would be uh, an option, uh, yeah. but they, they can't do that. Right? Well, he, I mean, it's not that he's superfluous with or without Walner, 
but I mean, they 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 don't really offer two different. Yeah, and things. and then Ke- Kepler's all also kind of like that. Yeah. So I I would say Kepler is maybe like a half step above at hitting left handed. Oh, to- yeah, totally. But I mean, but know. yeah, it would be it'd be too many cooks. Yes, and not the the funny kind. Uh, Kep- Kepler, another guy who uh, fouled the ball off his knee. That's another <laughs> update that we'll need to get Saturday. Rocco was, I don't want to say pessimistic, but he was a little worried about it, uh, at least for the, the weekend that it might affect him from playing. So the Twins could be, you know, the, the depth is really getting tested if that's true. Yeah, no, no question about it. Well, let's look ahead to game two and also to a few things about your coverage at the park. But you had one video that you furnished to me, and I want you to set it up because it's it's pretty entertaining. Well, it it sort of relates to, again, in a way, there has a permutation of the, the Royce Lewis situation. Um, Edward Julian uh, basically kind of, thought of by many or some as a platoon player, not someone that you'd want to go against uh, left-handed pitching, but he's been working on it and says he's better at it and got some work in against lefties in uh, spring training and looks to be right now, like the guy who's going to play every day at second base with farmer having to play every day at third. If, if the Mm -hmm. news is, is like that with, with Royce Lewis, and related to that is kind of a, a silly story about a, a baseball writer named Davey Andrews who uh, writes for Fangraphs and does uh, other things like that. But he's also a musician, plays in a band with other people who might be uh, familiar to uh, Twins fans, readers of fantasy baseball and analysis, Mike Petriello and Michael mm-hmm. Clare. They all kind of play together in, uh, on the East Coast. Anyway, Davey Andrews wrote a, a song about uh, Edouard Julien. It's only about 90 seconds long, but he uh, debuted it sometime earlier in spring training. And the, the twins uh, know about this song and they've played it for Julianne. It's a little silly. It's kind of, uh, it's got a little post-punk, Weird Al Yankovic irreverent feel to it. It's, uh, it, it almost sounds like a, a parody, but it, it, it actually has uh, it's pretty accurate when it comes to describing uh, Julian, uh, but in a funny way. And I, but what I hadn't seen uh, was like a reaction from him about it. I, I saw some things uh, maybe on, maybe on MLB.com uh, where they reported about this uh, this song. And um, uh, Farmer plays it sometimes to uh, to rile up Julian and to uh as like a workout song kind of a joke workout song i wanted to to ask julian himself you know had he heard it i knew he had but what did he think of it and and how does it all kind of play into uh uh, his style at the plate and his being left-handed going up against left-handed pitching and his development it's kind of funny how all how it all comes together so i thought that we would uh we'd play the song for the people and then play uh Julian's reaction to it. All right. Well, with no further ado, this is it. He's a twin. He's a Canadian twin, and he rakes. Until the lefty comes in, he won't swing If it's out of the zone, that's one thing I just gotta know Edward Julian, how you gonna rule again? Edward Julian, how you gonna rule again? Edward Julian, how you gonna rule again? He's absurd, the rookie match in the soon He knows French, and he means a platoon That's one thing I just gotta say, Edward Julian, how you gonna rule again? 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 He's a god, 
from the land of poutine where it's cold and nobody's mean as it would so he's basically home this one thing I just gotta know at what Julian are you gonna rule again 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 at what Julian are you gonna at what, Julianne, are you gonna rule again now? Topic ...that I wanted to ask you about. I know you know about the song that the, the dude uh, wrote. It's like a 90-second song. Uh, Edward Julianne, are you gonna rule again? Uh, but I did not see, like, a reaction from you on it. What did you think of it? I know your, your teammates kind of liked it, but you know what I'm talking about? And, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I've heard it a couple of times. They were actually playing it sometimes when we were warming up, so it was funny. So it's a good song, actually. The guy that, uh, the person that did that, it was he had a good voice. So uh, I think it was funny. Are you okay? He, I mean, he's respectful, but he does mention things like platoon and uh, doesn't play against lefties, but but also doesn't swing if the pitch is out of the strike zone. He's descriptive of your your game. Did you take that uh, with the humor and the? the yeah, I mean. For me, I don't. I try to not listen to the outside noise and what other people have to say about me. But um, you know, everybody has their own opinion on me, and I have my own opinion on me too. So at the end of the day, I'm going to trust and die with what I think and what I want to do in life. So um, I believe in myself, and uh, every day I go on that front to show everybody wrong, and that's what I'm going to do. Is it kind of funny though that uh, people are interested enough in you and in baseball that they do things like that, that they yeah, make it little is videos? Cool. It's, it's neat. To, I never thought I was going to have a song named after me or just a song about me, so uh, it was fun when I heard it, and, it, and it's kind of catchy, you know, Ed or Julian, are you going to be like it? So it was a good song, and it's fun to hear those things, but like I said, I try to not too pay attention to them. It cracked me up that you invoked the name Weird Al Yankovic with, uh, with that, because I recently heard for the first time Party in the CIA, and I just couldn't stop <laughs> laughing at... Uh, <laughs> Stage in the cool, like yeah, you know, like his his turns of phrase were so good. But but this song, uh, yeah, it's a it's an earworm for sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's dug in there real good. Uh, again, Davey Andrews, uh, who's working, you can find it Fangraphs and on uh, YouTube as a singer and a songwriter and a guitar player. Uh, really fun. He's uh, what 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 I kind of uh, liked about the situation though was that um, you know. Julian took it in good humor, but he mm -hmm. also was on guard, on guard a little bit about uh, people being uh, selling him short as a as a platoon player, and uh, kind of that's sort of been a, a sub theme of of his development here. That he's going to get a chance maybe to prove the twins uh, not wrong, but prove to the world that he could play absolutely every day at second. And uh, it's just kind of, it's funny that someone wrote a song about that. And that's sort of going on uh, concurrently with, with real life. Oh, I'm going to sneeze here. I feel bad. Um, the, the funny thing is that actually he gets his first plate appearance against a lefty and he does Edouard Julian things. He takes two balls and then gets a hit. He did. And that's, you know, real life. Sneeze it out, Brandon. Uh, it, it's funny. Yeah. It's just funny how uh, real life mirrors the uh the parody world sometimes and that that was uh kind of a, a mini highlight for me him actually getting on base against was it reagan's yeah i think well, it was a lefty and i think that's the only lefty they saw yeah because his first at bat which would have been in like the fifth inning because right. royce had two hits through the third so yeah fourth fifth inning it would have been I, still been reagan's it wasn't on the video but i wanted to ask him the the song is is based on a different song sort of a uh uh, an 80s post-punk song about Francois Mitterrand, Do You Have the Heater On? And it, this was like a, a sort of an underground Dr. Demento-ish kind of hit. And uh, Francois Mitterrand's uh, president of France in like the 70s and 80s. And I wanted to know from uh, from uh, Edouard, you know, is that a person he knows, is someone who grew up in Quebec? And he he does not know who Francois Mitterrand was. So uh, that that's just, that that's on me. I I, I just had to know if he, was that uh, schooled? He's like, yeah, I'm not really into that historical stuff as much, so that's uh, that's okay. But he does like the song. Well, and I asked Max Kepler one time if he knew about 
a pro wrestler from the late 90s that was from Germany. And he goes, hmm, no, we don't get any of the WrestleManias in Germany. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you don't know who Alex Wright is, as I'm trying to ask you if you know about his stupid little dance from 1997. Um, quickly here before we get out of Dodge, uh, Joe Ryan versus Seth Lugo in game two. What are you expecting? I'm going to be interested to see if he can be consistent with a split finger fastball. That's uh, something that he he's not working on. Uh, he wasn't working on a, a, a new shape for it or a new. It's not going to look different, he says. But the thing that he is concerned, not concerned about, but uh, was hoping to improve on with it during spring training, the offseason was uh, being consistent with it and, uh, you know, not spiking it and uh, it being more of a reliable pitch. And also, uh, you know, he kind of uh, has debuted or re-debuted a two-seamer. He said he grew up throwing a two-seam fastball and it's a pitch his dad taught him but it, it wasn't one that translated at first into major league usage, but he's uh, been working on it and that's going to give, give himself a different look against major league hitters. So I'm curious to see what uh, uh, another improvement on Joe Ryan is going to look like as we go into this season. And very quickly with all the lefties in the twins lineup, what are you expecting them to do against Seth Lugo? Because I know a lot of fans don't like when the twins face left-handed pitchers, but righties should be a different story. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, uh, it, it's kind of a open-ended question there. I, I would expect, you know, Willie Castro probably to be in left field again and uh, Farmer to be at third base. And uh, we'll see uh, where they put Walner. We'll see what happens with Kepler. Is Kepler going to be healthy enough? There's a lot of questions right now. I don't know what's going to – I mean – I think I think AK will DH, Santana will play first, Walner will play left, Kepler will mm -hmm. play right. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, uh, if everyone's healthy – Yes, that's what you'll that's see. True. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You might need to complain. Who knows right. the answer to that? But yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we will touch base again here. Hopefully, uh, after the game tomorrow, either just you and me chatting, or we'll do a show again soon and have a full recap of what we hope is a productive series. But this has been Locked On Twins, and we'll see you tomorrow night.